Hi, I'm Gary Lee from G&J Live Auctions in Green Valley, Arizona. We elected to purchase a square cash register system as a way to check our uh, customers out, and it's worked pretty well. However, when I bought the system, it just seemed pretty complicated uh, as far as something that's supposed to be simple, and I really couldn't find the answers that I needed on YouTube. And so I'm um, making this one for our employees as well as anybody else who, uh, uh, who needs to figure this system out. Um, what we're doing is we'll make it easy so you can skip through. Everything will be on a card when we go to a new topic in case it's something you want to skip over just go to the next card. But in this video we'll cover uh, setting up the icons and the taxes. Uh, we'll cover when you're starting for the day how much cash you have in the register so that you can figure out how much cash is in there at the end. Uh, the square register does that for you. We'll go through the simple ringing up of a customer, including somebody with a credit card, somebody with cash, or somebody with a check. Uh, there's different processes for that and some tricks that are pretty cool. Also, uh, if you have TPT sales or whatever your state might call them where somebody is allowed to purchase items tax-free, we'll show you how you can edit so that the tax is removed for that one purchase. Also, um, we'll show you how to correct an error, either an error on the cashier's part or an error where somebody is buying something and says, oh no, I've changed my mind, I don't want that, after you've rung it up, but before the sale is complete. And also, we'll show you how to do a refund uh, after the sale is complete on the full purchase or part of it. And last, uh, we'll show you how you can split the bill if you're uh, at a venue where that would come in handy. And also uh, a couple of uh, uh, troubleshooting items that we've discovered. Uh, but again, everything will be by those topics. And so as the topic, the new topic comes up, you'll be bored to see a white card with a topic name on there to show you what's coming up next. This way you can skip through to the next white card at Fast Forward. Uh, hope you enjoy this. Our system is very basic. We have your basic square register, a star printer, and a chip card reader, which probably everybody will have shortly if you don't have one already. And simply everything's connected to power and everything's connected to this connection base. You'll notice that everything is off right now, including the printer, although it's actually on, it's plugged in. But in this system, we have to turn on the iPad press home and go to the square register. Once we press the register and that comes on, so does the so does the printer. So the USB for the printer has to be connected and it has to be on. Of course it's much cleaner looking than that once you get all the wires out of the way. So let's move on. Let's start with setting up vendor icons. To set up for vendor items, which are these little icons here, um, it's very simple. And, and these vendor items, by the way, are uh, for the auction house. These represent different estates or consigners, but they could be sandwiches at a restaurant or uh, mechanical services at a uh, shop. But it's very simple. All you do is you go to Menu, which is down here. This is always where the Menu button is. Hit Menu, and then you go to Item, which is down here. Press item. Then you go to set up the grid, which of course is up here. Press set up the grid. And find an open space where you would like this to be. Maybe away from the other ones, who knows. Press this little square in there if you can't see it. Now all you're going to do is create an item. Create an item. And give it a name. Let's call this, I don't know, Coke. C-O-K-E. Okay. And you're going to hit tap to edit so you can give it a color for your icon box let's call it red hit the label again you can finish KE so it actually says coke rather than the first two and simply this gets you out of the keyboard and go back and hit save and there it is you see coke up there but you still see the little X's if you can see them on the icons so you want to hit done editing and go back to the register by simply hitting the menu button, the register button, and there you have it. Now if you 
have variables that you need to get rid of every once in a while, like Cope will say, all you do again is you hit Menu, Items, set up the grid, and it now has the X's on there so you can add and remove them. So remove Cope by hitting the X in the upper left corner of the box, and done editing. Boom. Go back to the menu, go to the register, and the Coke is gone. Starting the cash drawer. When you start your day, you're going to want to know how much money is going into the cash register as your bank. So when you get to the regular register screen, which you can always get to again by hitting menu and register, go to the menu button and hit reports. This button right here, reports. And if you closed out your last register properly, this is the screen you'll get. And you simply put in start drawer with the starting cash. Enter the amount that you're going to have in there as a starting cash, which might be, say, uh, $235.75. So you can say start drawer, $235.75, and then confirm start drawer. Boom. Your register will print out a receipt at the end of the day showing how much is in there. But right now it shows that you're starting your day with $235. Then go to your register. Okay, it's time to ring up a customer. If your customer has cash, a credit card, or a check, or even a gift card, Square will take good care of you. Let's see how. To ring up a customer, it's pretty simple. You just come to this screen from no matter what other screen you might be in by either hitting register or by hitting the first column to the right of the register to get into this screen. For us these represent estates or consigners. For you it may represent sandwiches at a restaurant etc. But what we want to know is let's say we have three sales and this one consigner JF sale was for a dollar. We add it, we just punch in a dollar and hit plus and then we maybe there was another sale from EB let's say it was five dollars hit plus and then there was one last sale from CD which was again a dollar fifty I'm keeping these items low because you can't really practice on this it actually records it what you're gonna see here is on the right it says there's a sale from JF for a dollar uh, we sold something of EB's for five dollars and we sold something for CD for $1.50. It shows that the tax comes to $1.21. Don't let that confuse you. The tax here is only 6.1%. But in our specific case, we also add a 10% buyer's premium, which is added under the category of tax. This will separate out on the actual receipt. I know it's a little confusing and you may not have this issue. But the charge is down here eight dollars and seventy one cents so you press when they're done you press the charge and it will ask you if you want to pay with cash credit card a gift card or if you scroll down it'll say other other is where they keep checks uh, but in this case cash gives you the choice are they paying with exact change are they giving you nine dollars are they giving you ten dollars let's assume they're giving us ten bucks so you press ten dollars and it's going to say that they get a dollar twenty nine change. So you want to print the receipt. And here comes the receipt. I don't know how clear this is to you, but it shows right on there, especially down the bottom where they break down the subtotal on the tax, which is seventy five cents buyer's premium and forty six cents tax. But this can also be emailed to them as one of the as one of the options. Let's try this with a credit card. Okay, let's do one with a credit card. In this instance, again we're keeping these items low because you can't practice on Square, it'll actually record it. Uh, somebody wants to buy three items. They bought one item from BS Estate, which is uh, which was 45 cents. Uh, they bought another item from the G estate which was 75 cents and then they bought a last item from the GM estate 
which was 50 cents. It only totaled $1.97, but for practices purposes, that's fine. So we're simply going to hit, we'll ask them if that's all, and they say yes, we hit charge. And they'll hit card for the card section. It'll ask you to swipe the card. And you'll notice here on the actual card charger, the light is green. And they just insert the card right into the inserter on the chip. So the chip is up. I just inserted the chip up and it says please sign and so you know the drill they just they sign then you've just clicked done signing and it's been approved it's been actually taken out of my visa card please remove card which we will now do would you like a printed receipt or an emailed receipt well, this customer wants a printed receipt, so we hit print receipt. And there is their receipt. Let's do one more sale where the person wants to pay by check. In this case, they again, they bought four items this time. One from JF for 75 cents. One from G for a dollar and one from SI for 25 cents and one from GM actually another one from G for a dollar 25 oops I made a mistake there I put 125.00 just simply back it off 125 okay that's all I want the charge is three hundred. Excuse me, three dollars and seventy-seven cents down here at the bottom. So we just press charge when it's done, and this time we're going to scroll up until we see other. Don't know why Square didn't just call it check, but other payment method is where check, gift card, and other is. So you get to put check. You did. You hit tender, and the check was. We received the check for. 377 which is in the cash register and this one they want a printed receipt instead of an email or a text. For those tax-free sales this is how it's done. Tax-free sales are very simple. For this demonstration I've gone ahead already and gone ahead and entered the amounts and the estates of the amounts to the total of 58 cents tax. But in this case, we have a person who's produced a certificate showing that they're a reseller and their items is tax free. So, very simply, we just touch the word tax on the screen to bring up this screen under taxes. Here, if you can read it, it says buyer's premium 10% and our Green Valley sales tax 6.1%. All we do is touch the red arrow, I mean the red minus sign for Green Valley Tax, and we hit delete. It only affects this one sale, and then of course done at the top. There's this person's sale, and the charge is now just the buyer's premium. The charge is three dollars and ninety-six cents, and ten percent of that, which is our buyer's premium, is thirty-six cents. So you hit charge, and they're gonna give us three dollars and ninety-six cents exactly. They had exact change and they want a receipt. Boom. Here comes their printed receipt. And if you can see in the receipt, it's quite clear at the bottom that their total is $3.96 with only the buyer's premium in there, no tax. This is how you edit a sale as it's being rung up and before it's been paid. Deleting an item before the charge has been fully rung up is pretty simple. In this case, uh, we've already added up the items from the purchaser and we've come up with a total and the purchaser looked and said, whoa, it couldn't be $128. Well, we realized that this item from this estate was supposed to be $11 and our cashier hit $110 instead. 
uh, with just one extra character, of course. A simple mistake, but it's a simple fix, just like the other one. You just touch the entry involved. Under regular price, you just tap it and just type in the, the, the correct price, which was $11. There's the new price, and you add it into the system and save it. Very simple. So now it went from 110 to $11 with a very simple charge of 1388 If you wanted to, you could eliminate the entire sale by hitting current sale and clear items and just start over. But that's really the, a shortcut you probably don't want to take when the first method is so simple. Let's just do one more quick sale before we move on. Again, these represent whatever you have. But in this case, we sold a PM for a dollar. We sold an SI for 50 cents. And we sold a G for 75 cents. The total is the charge of $2.61. So let's go ahead and charge that and let's pay by credit card and let's swipe that card now. Which you can swipe if you want to. Ah, now because I have a chip, because I have a chip in this particular card, the machine is telling me that you have a chip reader, so use the chip reader. This keeps me from being liable. So I insert the, card, the credit card into the chip reader. It's thinking. You can see green lights flashing on the chip reader. Now it says sign, so let's do that. Okay. Pretty nice signature, huh? Of course, to make somebody sign, you just spin the machine around. Everybody knows that. So now we hit done signing and it's processing and it's been approved. In this case, we just go to new sale or oh, please remove card, which I have, and I don't want a receipt this time. Okay. Well, we don't take refunds, we don't take returns at an auction, you probably do. And then again, there's times when there's errors that we would take a refund. And this is how it's simply done. This is a refund after the sale. Refunds are also fairly simple. And this is for after a sale. Could be the next day, doesn't matter. You simply go to the menu button down here on the bottom. Back up a little bit. Down here on the bottom, hit menu. This time you're going to go to activity. Right up here, activity. You press activity. All of your transactions are noted by amount and date. If you add the name, I believe there, you can uh, find it by name as well. But let's, uh, if you notice here, the first one, if you can see this, there's already a, a left arrow in orange. That means that a refund's been requested on that one. Let's do the next one. This was the one for $3.96. We click on this one. Uh, this was a cash payment. And so we're going to issue a refund. The amount to refund, it's very light in there. It says $3.96, but when you click on it, you put the same amount, $3.96, or maybe a different amount, and hit return. And then you can give a reason. And the reasons are returned goods, accidental charge, or canceled order. This place will cancel the order. Refund, $3.96. Processing refund, boom. Let's do another one. Let's do another refund after the sale. Menu, activity. We're gonna go for this $3.77 refund. That was at 11.50 a.m. on today's date. And we're just gonna issue a refund. Issue refund, amount to refund. It's very light, you might not be able to see it. It says 377. You just touch that and you hit 377. And return. And we're going to say this was an accidental charge. Boom. Refund 377. And you give them back their cash or their check, whatever it was. They want a receipt. So you print a receipt on this one. It's very simple. Here's your, here is your refund receipt right there showing that 
the items had been uh, properly refunded. Let's do one more simple one. Done. We'll go to the menu anyhow. Activity. Let's do this one for $1.97 that we did at $11.47, $11.48. In this case, we want to issue a $1.97 refund. Amount to refund. Just touch it. The amount. $1.97. Hit return. And this is because he returned the goods this time. Refund $1.97. Done. And let's do one more. This one was for $8.71. And this is, let's issue this refund. Amount to refund, $8.71. Hit return. Reason was a canceled order. Refund at $8.71. And they want a receipt on this one. Let's give them a receipt. Let's print it out. There it is. There's the refund. Shows canceled order, today's date, and how much was refunded. Of course, this is all compiled in the computer's software for later reports. This doesn't really apply to us, I don't think, but a buyer can split the bill. If there's a couple of buyers there that maybe they're at a restaurant and they want to split the bill, it's pretty easy to do. Let's just assume that these are the charges so far, which is only $2.90. But they want to split the bill, so you hit charge. Now, what I'll show you from here is if you were to hit card and the first, char the first credit card was dipped. Excuse me, let me go back. You have to hit split. Okay, if you were to then hit card and the cards was, first card was dipped, automatically it would, and the second card was dipped, automatically the machine, the square register, would divide the amount equally between the two cards. There are a couple of troubleshooting items that we've run across. It's been reported that sometimes after a credit card has been dipped or swiped, uh, this screen will pop up. And uh, it's clearly not the right screen, but it doesn't matter. Uh, you simply need to go to the cash register screen itself, which is always just to the right of the menu screen down here. So it's this one right here. Sometimes it has a number one in it. And that gets you back to the, to the correct screen. These other screens that can be accessed down here are for other functions that I haven't gone into, uh, like this one, which is a custom. If, if there's nobody, if there's a, a custom amount you want to add in there, uh, for example, something that you don't really have on the menu, you can add it in right here. Uh, or an item that's not that doesn't have a price tag on it, you can add it in under the custom one, but then always go back to your menu and it'll, it'll, it'll appear up here. Another troubleshooting we've run into is the printer doesn't seem to be on. It's plugged in, yet it doesn't seem to be on. And we've figured out that the problem is usually right here. It's at the connection block and oftentimes that if it's not plugged in completely, you won't see it come on. There it is. It'll say printer connected and your green light will come on. And of course the printer won't operate until you're actually in the register, the square register program. Okay, well we hope you found some of this information about the square register useful. Um, it's by no means complete. This is just some basic uh, setup and use information. Uh, one of the things we didn't go into was closing the register for the, day, for the day, which is under activity, and then you close out your cash drawer and it emails you how much money should be in the register, uh, which is a good thing. Uh, but there's a number of other items about the register that is uh, uh, that we didn't cover, but we hope that this basic introduction covers more than information that was previously out there for you. Thanks.